This is not your dad's tool shed. This is real expensive stuff. 3D printers, carvers, extruders, and all manner of computer-driven machinery that make stuff based on the data you feed them. These aren't the little tchotchke building units you can buy on eBay, but massive machines. Autodesk, which makes software that does everything from designing bridges to animating movies and video games, has set up this workshop a playpen for artists on Pier 9 in San Francisco. Artists get a chance to design on their software and build in their factory. This is all what you would call data-driven. Scott Kildall got data from the San Francisco Department of Public Works, plugged it into his computer, and built a 3D model of the city's sewer system, manhole covers included. Lots of manholes on Telegraph Hill. Adrian Siegel built this river canyon that maps water consumption in the U.S. the last half of the 20th century using numbers from the U.S. Geological Survey. Here's Stephanie Smith's model of 10 hours of traffic in the lobby of a business, visits to the water cooler and all. Sometimes the results are just frivolous, like Christina Larson and Sebastian Martin's fog bank, the design sculpted in wool felt on this huge machine. Or John Edmark's designs and animations based on Fibonacci numbers. On what? Fibonacci was a 13th century math whiz who rediscovered some work of the ancient Hindus that plotted out numbers in a pattern that revealed what is called the golden angle, which appears in nature, like in the uncurling of a fern. Some people attach a certain woo-woo to the formula, including Fibonacci himself, who claimed such a pattern of numbers in the breeding of rabbits. Salvador Dali actually painted with the so-called golden angle in mind. As did Edmark, who rotates his sculptures under a strobe to expose one take every time the bloom turns 137 degrees, the golden angle. I don't follow all of this, but the effect is neat. Paolo Savaglioni created the effects of the dancing waters at the Bellagio in Las Vegas with string. Sometimes the design needs a little help. Jennifer Berry gets her help from honeybees. She starts by using a computer design to design a frame and structure. She smears it with honey, sticks it in a hive, and lets thousands of collaborators finish the job. And while we're thinking out of the box, there's Rob Godshaw, who reinvented the wheel, the hamster wheel, in the form of a desk. And now he's giving new meaning to that simple staple of Dad's old tool shed, the C-clamp. Why not A, B, C, D, F, G, H, she asks. Certainly not I. That would be just too difficult. This is Russ Johnson.